Hi everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I'm very happy to share with you one of my favorite openings in all of chess, the Nimzo Indian, and I've put together here a really aggressive guide, a way that you can play against the classical Nimzo Indian as black in a very sharp manner. So we're going to be looking at all these lines and trying to find ways that we can take advantage of the position and get a super sharp, interesting, aggressive, dynamic position. So with all that in mind, before we jump into it, please hit that subscribe button so you know when my new videos are coming out. And let's dive in here and take a look. So we will back up for just a minute. And if white plays d4, we want to play the Nimzo, so we play knight f6. And after c4, e6, knight c3, white is ready to play the move e4. So we jump in here with the move bishop to b4. Black gets the pieces out as quickly as possible. And the only move we're going to focus on for white in this repertoire, obviously white has so many choices here. e3 is the most popular at Grandmaster play. Queen c2 is also very popular, and probably if you're at the club level, it might even be the most popular move, depending on where you are. But knight f3, f3, bishop g5, g3, a3, it goes on and on, even bishop d2. There's so many moves here that white could possibly play, so Nimzo is one of those lifetime repertoire ones. But let's start at what I think, at, at least at club level, most people are going to play queen to c2 and what I love about the Nimzo is it's completely flexible there's easy ways that you can play a very very solid position here with black or you can be sharp and dynamic it allows for a lot of room to play in a lot of different ways but let's look at the sharp stuff and have some fun today uh, I do want to mention that before this I had a look at a lot of different lines castling is the most popular move c5 does have an interesting piece sack in it and trying to attack those dark squares especially that d pawn right away makes a lot of sense but the move I am going to recommend is pawn to d5. I think by attacking the c pawn immediately, this does lead to some pretty sharp complications. And then there's some strange moves, knight to c6, d6, b6. You can even take on c3. There's a lot of moves for black. But let's focus on a repertoire choice here, which is pawn to d5, attacking that c pawn. So we will be breaking this up into three parts. Today's game, we will be looking at c takes d5, the main choice. A3, another possibility with a lot of options for black, including a very sharp line that I hope you guys will enjoy. And part three, we'll round it off with the stuff where white lets us take the pawn or just doesn't really try that hard to put any pressure on black. So knight f3, a move like e3, bishop g5, those kinds of moves are all going to be looked at at the very end of this series in part three. With all that in mind, let's look at what is probably the most logical move and the main move. C takes d5. The idea is... The pawn was attacked, and white doesn't have to doesn't want to have to play a move like e3. He wants to take, so he can get his bishop out to g5, and then play e3, and white hopes to develop his pieces. You know, white's hoping to go here, e3. Get the pieces out without any problems, but black's job here is to cause as much confusion as possible as soon as possible. Now, the main move that I do think is the most aggressive, actually, is e takes d5. There is an alternative, queen takes d5, so if you do play this a lot, what's nice about the Nimzo is you can mix it up, but these lines with queen takes d5 are not going to be as sharp as what we're going to focus on. e takes d5, very logical move. And yeah, the point of taking was to bring the bishop out, and white's intention, obviously, is to play e3, be left alone, bishop d3, knight f3, or knight e2, castles, and just leave me alone, black, I'm going to do my thing, I'm going to get my stuff out and hope for a small advantage. So we have to disrupt him. Now, the reason we haven't castled yet is we're going to save the time, and our plans here as black are very aggressive. The main ideas are going to involve the move c5, kicking this bishop away by playing h6, and then if it retreats, g5, so that we can bring the knight to e4. Queen's going to go to a5, and yeah, we're going to put as much pressure as we possibly can on c3 and look at the consequences of that in today's game which is going to be Razul Ibrahimov versus Shakir Mamadyarov. This game was played a while ago when Mamadyarov was only 26.99 rated, but still a very instructive game where they, they followed the main line for a long time here. So the move that was played in this game is h6, asking immediately what the bishop wants to do. And before we come to the game, which is bishop to h4, obviously a very logical move, the idea is you preserve the bishop. You don't want to give the bishop up for a knight. But here is white's one opportunity in our repertoire to try to make it simple, lame, boring. But we have other moves in mind. We have an idea. After queen takes, obviously threatening the pawn on d4, 
Uh, white will need to react to this. So let's take a quick look at this line. If they want to give us the bishop, what can you do? We'll take your bishop and we'll play this line. Most people here, they're going to play the move a3 and we're going to take. And here's where it gets kind of interesting. They're going to take with their queen. And now, obviously, c6, super good logical move. Nothing wrong with it. If you want to play c6 and then you want to play like this, here's the wimpy line. If you want to do this and you want to castle and you want to bring your stuff out, go for it. This is nothing wrong here. Bring your stuff out, play this position. That's the wimpy way to play though. This is the aggressive guide. So what I'm going to recommend is that we actually leave that pawn on pre and play the move castles. Now it's really easy to do this on the first move because here it doesn't make any sense for the queen to grab this pawn, not with the d4 pawn hanging. This would be a horrible trade for white. But it does get a little more interesting after the move e3. After the move e3, uh, c6, obviously still a very logical, popular choice. Nothing wrong with it. If you want a solid position here, play c6. But if you're feeling ambitious, try the move bishop to f5. And let me just give you a little sample of how white could go wrong. Very few people have ever dared to take this pawn. But if they do, what you need to know is um, it is time to start harassing the queen. Rook c8 is a very good move. I do like just starting with this developing move. The point is we're controlling the e5 square. That way, if you know, if we played rook c8 right away, maybe queen e5 was white's idea. Let's just control it. And now it really is time for white to try to get some stuff out or try to move that queen out of the way. White's uh, black's plan is to put a rook over on the c file as soon as possible. Move this knight out the way. Rooks are coming in and black's gonna have a huge initiative here. The trap, obviously, a lot of players might be wondering, what if they take here? Well, actually, white is totally busted. Not so easy to see at first, but the idea is here. And yeah, you can try one of two things. If you do try to run away, it doesn't really matter where you try to go. Any line where you let us take here, this is going to be huge trouble for white. Um, definitely not gonna be all that easy to play. One idea to trap the queen is to go here and here and then try to trap the queen. Let me illustrate it. Let's say white plays way too routinely and just simply develops the stuff. The way you trap the queen is by bringing this rook up here and after this playing queen c2. That's part of our threat. We want to trap that queen. Uh, it can happen. It's very easy to do. So in general, taking this b pawn is never going to be good for white. Taking the first pawn on c7, possible. They can never take that b pawn. It's just going to be immune. Uh, and yeah, whatever happens. There's going to be a big initiative here. So having even my experience, even if you don't know exactly what you're doing, as long as every move, you're putting your pieces on better squares, white is going to have to move the queen a bunch of times. And in my experience, it just always works out for black, even if you don't know 100% what you're doing. Other options. Uh, most people, I guess at club level, maybe they'll develop their knight. And yeah, it's again, you don't need 100% to know the theory here. You just need to know the main ideas. You can start with rook to c8. You can still wimp out with c6, or you can play knight to d7. This is perhaps the most aggressive move. And yeah, you're gonna get a similar position to this. I think there's one interesting game here that's kind of worth pointing out. We won't look at the whole thing, but you can get a structure like this, where black simply argues, I am still doing very well in development, and I now have plans of playing on the queen side, you know, eventually going like this, arguing, it's going to be pretty difficult for white to ever manage this e4 break. That's the break that white would love to get in in this kind of position. And there was a game I looked at a little bit earlier that went a4, the idea of stopping black's b5. Black played a6, the idea of playing b5. And after a5, actually played a very interesting move here, b5. And after it takes, took back with the queen, and black got significant pressure on the b file. This pawn ended up being uh, a weakness and a target. And yeah, white was never even close to breaking in the center. And yeah, this should be definitely fine for black if this happens in your game. So that's all I really want to say about this line for now. If they take your knight, you take back with the queen, feel free to try to sack the c pawn and yeah, take it from there. All right, but let's look at the main course here. What happens if they decide to play bishop to h4, which is gonna happen in almost all of your games. The idea now is to play c5, and yeah, we are threatening to take that deep on, so white will end up taking it to stop our threat. We're never actually threatening to push here due to castles and all these lines. 
This just always seems to work out for white, so don't think that's even an option. The idea now is to play g5. You can see <laughs> we start on the king side, then we play on the queen side, then we play on the king side. We're doing well on all sides of the board. After bishop to g3, the idea was knight to e4. And remember, the idea is bring the queen out as soon as possible, put pressure on the knight. That's what we're playing for. e3. White needs to develop some stuff, and of course, queen to a5. So there's been a few different ways that players with the white pieces have tried to defend this. In the game that we're going to look at, the main move, which is played almost every time, um, 131 times in this database, knight to e2, 50 times rook c1, this is also a serious alternative, and every now and then, bishop to e5, I suppose we will start here. It's not the most common choice of most players, but it is a typical idea. Usually, they reserve this move until the knight's on e2, ready to jump in here. But one idea is, you attack our rook, we castle. This is just kind of a, a typical idea here. And if they go here, knight to c6. This can get very crazy and very interesting. I'm going to point out moves just so you can get kind of an idea of what it's like if they play here. You can take this bishop, and yeah, crazy stuff is happening everywhere. What's going on? One move I do like that I don't believe has ever actually been played in a game is bishop to f5. And it looks like, at first sight, this might totally be a, a winning trick if white takes, which is obviously not forced. We'll look at another move in just a second. You can take here. And for a second, it might look like black is winning. Because, yeah, obviously, if you take back here, we're going to take check and we're going to win your rook. So... The thing is, they don't have to take. They can play king f1, and remarkably, this might just hold on for white. Yeah, not so easy, though. You can tell this is sharp stuff. It's a lot easier to play black in this kind of position. So another alternative would be to play the move e4, when, remarkably, we can ignore everything and play queen takes c5. Um, <laughs> just crazy stuff. Who knows what they could even do. If they take here... We can take back, and yeah, should be a, a big initiative here going on. You know, we have threats like this, the e-files open, everything is kind of working out well here. White might even have to play a move like king f1 here, just to hold on. Not going to be fun for white. So that is one idea, but yeah, you're not going to run into the immediate bishop to e5 very often. You will run into rook to c1 very often, where there are kind of two ideas, I think, the most aggressive is actually knight to c6 if you're looking for a sharp aggressive game a simple approach if you can call it that is to take on a2 notice the pin so the knight cannot capture your queen however you do have to be careful with black because eventually white will get his stuff out white will put this knight somewhere e2 or f3 castle and then your queen will be hanging so yeah got to be sort of careful and now in this position the most common move is bishop to b5 White is trying to get his stuff out as quickly as possible. And just to illustrate the dangers, I will show you not yet the main move. You gotta play bishop to d7. You gotta trade and get your pieces out as quickly as you can. But just to highlight the dangers for black, don't play this move. Don't play knight to c6. Now, when they get their pieces out, don't do this. It's, it's, I've seen this sort of stuff before. Once they castle, your queen is attacked. There's no time for tricks. There's no time for this kind of typical trick where you're attacking their queen. They just take you. No, this is not going to work. This is just not going to work. Um, I don't know. So many things hanging. Probably can take anything. But no, no, no. This is going to be hanging. This guy's threatening to take the knight and take the bishop. This bishop's hanging. Too much is hanging here for black. Just don't do it. Do remember, if they check you in this position, you need to play bishop to d7. Now the idea is, after they capture, you capture, that's good, now you get your knight out pretty quickly. Defending it, kind of an important square, you know, usually that's where a bishop might want to go. Maybe the knight will be able to take here. And now, knight e2. What's funny is, this has been worked out, we're only on move 12 now, but the theory here goes very deep. So all of this has been forced and played before. Knight takes c3, after knight takes, the idea was queen to c4. And at first sight, this looks tremendous for black. The idea of trading the knights was, now we're not letting white castle, but the funny joke is, black can do, the, or sorry, white can do the same to us. <laughs> Bishop to d6, and now we can't castle. But yeah, still lots of games in the database. Knight takes c5, and an idea is, after takes, we have to take here with our queen, 
black is forced to take with the queen. You cannot play here. This move actually loses. Can you spot it? Don't fall for this one. You know you want to keep the queen there so they can't castle. But sadly, boop, b3. This is going to cause some issues attacking our queen. And after we back up, I mean, what are we going to do? How are we going to keep our d-pawn protected? It's all going to start falling apart here. The knight's coming in. There's this fork. This is hanging. Not going to work out for black. Got to be careful. So... Yeah, the reason they take your knight is because you have to take with the queen. If you had to, if you got to take with a bishop, this would be tremendous for black. But you have to take with the queen, and the theory keeps going. Castles. <laughs> and now it goes takes. And yeah, this has all been played before. Queen a4 check. <laughs> so queen c6. Yeah, you don't need to memorize all this, but it does help. The point is, you do get to this kind of endgame where after castles. It should be equal. White can play this. You can play around with this endgame. <laughs> the theory just keeps going and going and going. This is still multiple games, so this does happen a lot. The trick is get really active with your rooks in most endgames. You're going to get to an equal um, equal number of pawns in some rook endgame. And as long as you stay active, you should be fine and be able to hold the draw here. So that is one interesting way to play. So just as a reminder, what we were looking at is the move rook to c1 very common and after queen to takes a2 the uh the most popular choice after here here um yeah instead of taking on a2 my apologies what we're looking at is after rook to c1 taking on a2 definitely fine if your opponent knows a million moves of theory you can get some end game that is theoretically equal um, but there's also this sharp alternative, knight to c6, so some people might be interested in it. Even if you don't play it, just kind of looking at these lines is going to help your ability to understand um, these positions a little bit more. Bishop to d3, now black most often is going to take. And if you do have time on your own, you may want to look at the game um, Viejo Puns versus Wesley So. It was a fantastic game, um, and it went something like d4. E takes, knight takes, look at how the queen doesn't have all that many options. Queen to d1, and after bishop takes c5, black should be doing very well here. And I think after knight f3, bishop g4. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Black is going to have to go hide the king on the g-file. White is either going to castle and kind of give up on this idea of putting a rook here, or as in the game, uh, king f1 was played in the Wesley So game. But either way, just to maintain this pressure here, and then black's going to go put the king over here, bring the rooks to the middle. Should be fine. It's a very interesting alternative for black if you want to explore that. But, yeah, coming back, here's our, our very main position. We've kind of taken a look at bishop to e5. We've taken a little look at rook to c1. But let's focus on the main move here, and now we're back to our Mamajarov game. We want to play like him. He plays this position very well. So notice where he puts his pieces in all of these lines. The bishop is going to go to f5. This does set up threats. So every now and then, you play a blitz game, and your next move is knight takes g3, and you win. It's happened more often than you would think. Not super easy to play here as white. So, yeah, the main move now is actually to save the bishop and attack the rook. But, you know, this is hard for white, too. Imagine being in white's shoes. Would you be able to find bishop to e5 unless you knew about it? So if you're not playing a well-prepared opponent... You could just get enough pressure and crush white right from the start. Um, alternatives, you do see this move occasionally. Uh, they might take your knight on b8, which is always shocking when they do it. And this isn't meant to be good for white, but in real life, it's harder than that. Sometimes they take it and you're like, ah, I don't think you're supposed to do that. But then, you know, real life, this position can get tough, so we should take a look after we take the bishop. Knight to d4. This is the very common idea. And this does pose a very interesting question to the bishop. And <laughs> I think you have to be careful because bishop to b5 check is coming. So you possibly can go back here, but it's going to be dangerous. After this check, I think some people have tried running their king around this way. But come on, play king to f8. Be real. And you can play some position like this. This is really complicated. If you want to avoid the headache, you bring the bishop back to d7. Not a horrible square. And yeah, this might happen. And there's crazy lines. Bishop a4 is just as common as taking. But you do want to play around with this a little bit. It gets, it gets crazy. Because here they can take it. You get this like check, and then you can take all sorts of crazy stuff. There's still a whole bunch of possibilities here. 
Um, but what you need to know is if they do take your knight, it's not the end of the world, but it is very tricky. Um, so I wish you the best of luck when they do that. Castles, though. That's what was played in our game. It went bishop e5, castles, knight d4. Now we're just following the game. And here, again, there's a lot of choices, but I do trust what Mamajarov came up with. The main move is rook e8, a counterattack. You know, not necessarily the most intuitive move you might think of. And another option is taking the knight now on c3. So let's focus, though, now. We're in our game mode, and he took. And so there's a lot of in-between moves in this one. Bishop takes on b8. And again, a typical idea. So yeah, get ready. They will sometimes take that guy. And now Momajarov decided to take on c3. So yeah, requires a lot of calculation here. Now, the queen is attacked, but the bishop is hanging. There's this idea of some discoveries here. So, yeah, you want sharp stuff, this is the line for you. After knight takes f5, saving the queen. Knight e4, check. That's a discovered check. And, yeah, now you got to move the king. So, perhaps this is objectively an equal position. But, come on, the king's on e2. You know you'd want to play black here. Black has to be very careful, though. H-pawn's hanging, bishop's hanging. He decides to toss in this little check. And white's move now is absolutely forced. It is worth looking at some stuff. Um, you have to play king to d1, as happened in the game. I guess he worked it all out. If here, hopefully you guys can see the move. The idea is queen f6, attacking the knight, attacking the pawn. There's no time to go here because of the f2 pawn. So this would be devastating. So yeah, easy, easy for white to blunder. Here also is a big mistake. Though, can you find the winning move? Maybe not the easiest. There are a couple choices. Maybe you're looking at queen f6. It looks pretty good. But nope. Boop! Have to give the pawn. <laughs> if they take it, they are crazy. Queen here. And if they oh, try as hard as they can to hold this knight, just not going to be able to do it. King's going to go back. Knight's going to fall. This is falling apart here for white. So, yeah. What else? I mean, come on. How could this work out? <laughs> Knight's pinned. Everything's crazy. This also is going to end very well for black. So, yeah, very interesting idea um, in this position. Let's get back to our game here. After the knight took an f5, check. King uh, had to go to e2. After the queen check, had to go to d1. And now, queen to f6. We can see all these moves are being played. And, yeah, attacking the knight. The bishop is still hanging on b8. What's going on? f3, trying to kick the knight. But black does very well now here. Takes the knight, and this is a brilliant idea, because now when they take our knight, we are opening the d file. That's where the white king is. We want to hunt them down. This should work out very well for white. White is, in fact, doing incredibly well in this position. Uh, possibly winning. If not, it's very, very close. So rook e to d8. The other rook goes to c8. We make a threat. We put as much pressure as we can on the file. Rook to c8, threatening to take this bishop, putting more pressure on this c-pawn. Everything's going to open up. And yeah, that white king is not getting out of there. How's white going to get the pieces out? Queen a4 tried, but now a nice sharp move. I mean, kind of easy to look for sacrifices when we reach a point like this. Rook takes c5. Excellent choice. Really blasting through here. Uh, yeah, have a look around. Not going to be able to take the rook. Not going to be able to take the rook. This is going to be a checkmate. So good stuff and after here just simply taking and yeah <laughs> white needs to get some pieces out but you just can't do it trying to get the bishop out now another very nice move a5 making the queen move and after the queen moves rook f6 making lots of threats so check and back you've defended on that side a little bit good job but now rook c2 the rook comes in the other way yeah not going to be able to hold this one. A4, just a brutal move. Notice how there's nothing you can do. Whenever you go here, why did we play A4? Boop! Now you can tell. This is going to lead to checkmate. Um, yeah. So takes, takes, and so can't go to A5, but let's swing the queen where she'll be able to come in. And after queen D5, white did resign. Notice after here, what we can do is... Now go back to the square. This is going to lead to checkmate. You can block with pawns. You can block with rooks. But that's going to be checkmate. 
Yeah, that was amazing. So vicious attacking stuff. Get all your stuff out as soon as you can. Put as much pressure on that C3 knight. And tremendous, tremendous attacking game by Mama Jarov. That's what he's known for, so do check out all of his games if you like sharp attacking chess. And do come back for part two. Make sure you're, you are subscribed so you do get the notification when part two does come out. And I will see you guys next time for another Blueprint.